He got gas ties by a <laughs> street car. <laughs> back oh we're back yeah we took a little break i think is this thing working yeah it's working right. so i think we took a break for a couple weeks wasn't a whole lot going on really cold here in ohio uh sucks. no racing anywhere really um Not but now there's up. signs of light i think i think winter is almost done and we've got the truck back together everybody seems to be excited to go racing again yeah. There's a lot of events popping up here and there. Uh, Lock-ins everywhere, and people are g just getting their motors back, their transmissions back. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff going on now. Getting their wheels polished. Yeah. Thanks. Polishing my wheels. Somebody's got to do it. Otherwise, you'd be rolling around ghetto all the time. Your, ru your lug nuts was Look all rusty. Look at the rusty. truck, man. Look at it. It don't mean it has to have nasty looking wheels i polished the valve covers today i polished all the the cold side tubing polished the hat looks good cleaned up all your wiring mess you you do the wiring so if there was a mess it would be your fault i just drive <laughs> just kidding i don't just drive but uh so yeah we got the truck back um the engine has been at the machine shop for a little over a month. Um, they did a good job. They though. did a great job on it. Uh, we we didn't know if it was going to be savable. The block was so bad. Uh, it needed a sleeve in cylinder seven, and I can't remember the other one. It was four. Number four. So we hurt number four on nitrous a year ago, and um, we had a sleeve put in by another machine shop. I won't mention the name. But apparently it wasn't installed very, very well. Um, there was a really bad lip at the bottom of it. It was razor sharp. It tore up number four piston skirt. Tore up number four piston skirt. Uh, apparently it was put in sideways, crooked, and because I mean, of, yeah. you make it sound like it's real bad. I mean, it was just it was crooked. off. It was off just enough to cause problems. Yeah. So because of that, it had to be uh, reinstalled with a new sleeve. So they had to bore the block out farther than the outside diameter for a standard sleeve. So they had to not only order a, <clears throat> a larger outside diameter sleeve, they also had to order one a little bit deeper because they had to square the hole in the block and go all the way down to the bottom a little bit farther than what you would normally bore one. So, so yeah, that, that took a little while waiting on a custom sleeve. Um, we had a, a couple day hang up with cam bearings, but um, the main thing is it the block is gorgeous. They did an awesome job on it. Um, they fixed it up and they saved that block. Yeah, and Joe Coben at Performance Research, he stayed. I think it was 12 hours straight. We started about four in the afternoon. It was just a bare block. Uh, he put. All the bearings in put the crank in rods pistons you know fit everything and he stayed for 12 hours straight four in the, four in the afternoon till four in the morning getting that thing together degree to cam in which we've never done that it was uh, yeah i always just put it in at zero or whatever so and just it wasn't off that much what was it all four degrees uh yeah it was 113 degrees and the cam was ground by uh john booley for a 116 yeah. so he advanced the uh we actually put it at 115 so all right so i mean it's, it's pretty close. close to 116 now and that's what it was ground for so it may run a little bit better up top now uh, it might not run as good down low though but i mean before we were leaving on gate pressure and it was still wild you know what i mean well, that's true, too. We couldn't go any lower on boost, and it was still leaving really hard. So this might give us a little bit better tuning for junkier surfaces. Possibly. Never know. We'll just have to see how it does. But de it definitely sounds good. It's got six-inch rods in it this time. Last time, uh, we're like the kings of running junk. 
Um, the last crank that we had, it was a it was a summit crankshaft, old. It was uh, originally cast and machined by Cola, out of California, back when Cola was still in business. They made that's what the story was from Bob anyway. The guy at the machine shop we got it from. So it was a summit crank, and evidently, from what I can tell, on the rear flange is that the original crank we had in it was originally an external balance crank and they cut the counterweight off the uh, the flange on the back and then internally balanced it it was internally balanced with a for five seven rod which is the pistons and the rods that we had the last time we had it apart so we just went ahead and reused them but uh, bob explained to me at performance research that uh, trying to balance a 400 uh, with anything less than a six inch rod gets to be a real pain in the butt because the piston skirts want to hit the counter throws on the crank, counterweights on the crank. So Bob talked us into going ahead and putting six inch rods in it this time. And it's got SRP pistons in it, really nice set of pistons. Uh, I don't know, it's about 13 to one compression, probably a little bit too much for what we're doing, but we're not we're not really going to worry about it too much. It ran pretty good before. It was with, tough finding a, a shelf piston that was 40 over. Right. We, so the pickings were slim. what we needed with the rods and the crank that we had. Right. Um, so we were really glad that SRP had that available and in stock. Right. So the bore size on it now is 4165. Yep. So technically that's a 408, I guess. 408. Four ten, something like that. It's a four oh eight. Whatever. Um, so our, we had our transmission. Um, we took that out a couple weeks ago. Thanks to me. Yeah, you wanted me to take it out and get it freshened up while the truck was just sitting here, no engine in it. Good thing so, we did. Yes, because it needed a bearing in the rear uh, tail shaft or whatever. Yep, we took it up to Dion at Vickers Performance Transmissions in Alliance, Ohio. Now listen, this shop up here, it's a small shop. It's not a great big operation. It's low overhead. It's a family operated business. It's the kind of people I like to do business with because, um, you know, when you call, you're talking to the guy that does the transmission. He owns the shop and he works in the shop. And uh, it's not a place that you're going to, you know, go pay ultra high dollar prices for your transmissions you know you're going to get the same price that we get on stuff they're just really good people really down to earth uh, and mom and pop operations like that uh, that are interested in in working on racing stuff is getting hard to find these days so we're very fortunate uh, that you know Dion came on board he actually called us and asked if uh, we needed anything and I said well probably <laughs> By now, we probably do. So. The transmission had been in the truck for a couple of years, and right. it had taken a lot of abuse, obviously. Right. Uh, so. And it looked good inside, except for the tail tail shaft bearing, the roller bearing was out of the back. Yeah, so that could have went out in Texas and caused a real problem. So glad we went and got that done. And he's got your transmission now for the Nova, right? Yeah, I uh, dipped into my secret stash. Um, the power glide my Nova is ancient. It was originally built back in the late eighties, early nineties. And the trans brake in it, the valve body is actually an old grinder valve body. One of his original trans brakes, um, when grinder first started making his own or machining his own valve bodies. And it's actually, it's a really cool trans brake. It's a, um, it's a pro tree brake very fast release but you don't have to push the button to back up it's uh it's been a really good trans brake over the years i've won quite a bit of money with it bracket racing it so but you know i mean that transmission's old i mean it's it's i mean it was freshened up by uh ray um sours i Rest don't know peace. a couple years ago and ray just recently passed away so that's another reason i'm very fortunate um that Dion came along when he did because the only person I've ever trusted to touch my transmission was Ray Sowers. Ray was a wonderful man, a machinist, and uh, I'm going to miss him greatly. But so uh, 
power glide's done. I think we're going to go up and get it tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to go up to Vickers and get it tomorrow, I think. Sweet. So we can go up there and have lunch at that restaurant again. That was good food. Yeah, we'll have to go down in the morning because when we get back, right. we're going to meet Eric, and he's going to bring the tires. Or, or well, I'm he's gonna, coming to get the tires yeah. and get and bring in our fuel. Yeah. If he doesn't spill it. Yeah, that's very possible the way he drives. <laughs> Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> that's his new nickname. That's what we should call a car. Crash Bandicoot. No, it's If it Boston wasn't Boston, George. Georgia, it would be Crash Bandicoot. I'm just kidding, Eric. I love you. Yeah, we love Eric. He's uh, like my he's like my third son. Yeah. So, got the truck back together. Fired it up yesterday. Everything sounds good. Oil pressure's good. It's starting to sound uh, better and better as you warm it up more as the, re as the ring set in. Yeah, they always do. The first time you fire them up, you're like, ugh. Sounds terrible, you know. The they just don't have a very good rhythm, and they just, at least I, that's my opinion. Every oh, time we've ever, yeah. we, the the first time we've ever fired up an engine for the first time, they sound like garbage, uh, in my opinion. Until the rings seat in, it's like once you heat cycle it two or three times, by the third time you start to hear them beating on the mufflers really good. Um, I don't know. I'm an old timer. That's just I've always been that way. I just tune by ear. But it's starting to it's starting to thump on the mufflers pretty good back there. You can hear it. Uh, I did adjust the idle mixture screws a little bit. Um, I turned them in a little bit, which is pretty common for a fresh build like that. That's tight. And it's you know a little bit uh, a little bit bigger bore. It's pulling a little bit more vacuum on the uh, idle circuitry, so it was a little bit rich. I leaned that out a half a turn on each on each corner, and it came right to life. It sounds really good. So. Air fuel looks good from inside the cab. So I think we're in pretty good shape. I mean, I just uh, warmed the truck up tonight, uh, checked transmission fluid, topped it off with some Hot Shot Secrets special stuff. It's uh, a new synthetic transmission fluid that they offer. Um, so we filled the transmission up with that tonight. We're getting ready to change oil. It's got straight 30 weight in it for a break-in. We're going to change that over to uh, Hot Shot Secrets 20W50 uh, Adrenaline. I can't remember what Adrenaline R5, I think R5. is what it's called. Yeah. It's really good stuff. A um, little higher priced, but you get what you pay for. Uh, you know, we were, we were present for a dyno test up there at the machine shop that one day up in Mount Vernon and I was pretty impressed with the stuff um, it made just as much or maybe a little bit more than um, Brad Penn 2050 so yeah so we're looking forward to uh, to working with Hot Shot Secret this year we appreciate their sponsorship and their help uh, not that only was with the old car Brad but, Penn. yeah that was old Brad Penn so, so now they, I think they've changed something because I'm seeing a lot of people have issues with that oil gumming up yeah I don't but. know I seen that the other day I've got, it's still in a dually. Right. I ain't had no trouble. Yeah. I mean, I haven't looked at it, obviously, but it's been it's in a dually all winter. I mean, I've seen multiple people, but I don't know. Hot Shot Secret is what we're running this year. Uh, we're glad that they stepped on board for sure. Yeah, we can't can't thank Kyle Fisher and everybody at Hot Shot Secret enough. And they don't just enough. support us. They support a, a lot, lot of different racers, yeah. racers in, in Ohio and uh, a lot of tracks in this area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they they want to see the sport do good they're they're really really good people so we locked into a race in oklahoma oh yeah outlaw armageddon we're going to that what is that august early august that's august 2nd and august 3rd cool, cool. outlaw armageddon and noble oklahoma that's going to be a thunder valley raceway that's going to be crazy there is 96 cars entered in big tire yeah just in big tire alone I believe there's upwards of 64 in small tire or more. Yeah. And then True Street, I think the class that I'm running, True Street, I think there's at least 50. Good. So it's a $150 entry for True Street. We're running for $10,000. You can't beat that. Yeah. And they're trying a new format also. Yeah. I mean, they're I'm the not first to try this. I'm not. a. I don't know. I'm, I'm torn on it. I understand why they're doing it. I understand the, the idea behind it, and they're right. You know, that's a big event, and there's people that are coming from all over the country, us included, 
you know, um, it does help, and I think it's probably helped their attendance this year. I mean, I, the place has got plenty of people locking in. Now, the format, if you're if you don't know what it is, it is a qualifying three three rounds of qualifying is what you get, and it's not your typical qualifying. They don't have your times. There's no timing system at all. Right. What it is is a win loss ratio ratio so basically the cars that i guess if you lost all three rounds you're probably not going to get in the show you're not going to get in you're probably uh, going to have to win gonna two qualify or... very well right i'm not sure if there's a bump I, I didn't really read into that far i don't know if they're only taking so many but <clears throat> i assume a high win car if you've won three you're going to race somebody that has lost three first round most likely that's no just... that's not how it works if you've lost three you're not even going to get in the show well i don't know if there's a bump out of it oh i don't know that's what i'm saying so it's a it's a three round qualifying deal first time it's ever been done to my knowledge uh but it's going to be interesting it is i will say traveling that far it is good to know that if something does happen for whatever reason we're going to get to race three times. Yeah, you're going to get to get down the track at least three times. You're going to so. get to put on a show for the people there, whatever. You're going to have a good time, no matter what. And let's be honest. I mean, we know firsthand uh, at Midnight Madness, the spectators are what pay those purses. Right. And say Big Chief goes out there and blows the tires off first round, hits the wall. He wants to race again. You know, people want to see his car go down the track more than one time at an event. Right. You know, it's it's one of those things you've got a lot of Because it's not cheap there. to get into that. I, I noticed the spectator prices and are I'm pretty stout. I'm sure it's stout. not cheap to get some of those guys there either. I don't think they I don't think they get paid to do that. Mm. I think that's something that they do to help support their local track. Okay. Regardless, it don't matter. Um, <clears throat> I'm I'm excited to go out and see Chief and Sean and and um, and all the guys from Oklahoma. Um, Chucky, the king of the trailer park. Yeah, Chucky, the king of the trailer park. And uh, Dingus Alex Laughlin, I guess, is going to be out there to race. Alex Laughlin is going to be at Outlaw Armageddon, and it's apparently going to be the first time he no preps, which I don't know. He says he's too, too busy doing pro stock or whatever else the rest of the year. That's going to be his, his debut for all no the, prep. All the stuff that nobody pays attention to. Pro stock is dead. NHRA is pretty much failing. Um, there's no question about that. Sponsors are pulling out. It's hard to get, you know, a lot. You see every day a lot of these teams, they just, they're struggling to find funds to do it. They don't promote reasonably. it at all. It's from not, what I see. I mean, I don't see anybody on Facebook talking about Pro Stock or Nitro Cars or Pro, well, a little bit of Pro Mod. Pro Mod seems to be fairly popular, but I don't pay any attention to it. The That's thing just is, me. it's just not relatable. Right. Nobody nobody cares. Okay. Like, who wants to sit and watch some some tube chassis car that looks like a freaking spaceship get on the track? Like, nobody cares. Nobody, I don't care. I don't care. I mean, I've always liked Pro Stock back when it was carbureted and they had hood scoops on them. And, I mean, I was kind of interested. Pro Stock in I mean, its heyday was 90s. back in the 70s and 80s. That, yeah. was in its, that was its heyday back when Warren Johnson was in there. But and, yeah, when, I mean the Jenkins. cars still looked kind of like real cars. They weren't, yeah, stupid looking. And I think that's a lot of the reason why Sean and Chief were complaining about on one of their podcasts that even No Prep was starting to head that direction. And I think they've corrected that, and that they've you know they've not they're not allowed to have up tubs anymore, and got to have a VIN tag. It's got to be factory OEM roof and quarters. It'd be factory wheelbase. It's got to be factory wheelbase within two or three inches. So, in my opinion, I think that they were dead on with that uh, because it was headed in a bad direction. But yeah, I mean, everyone's going to start building them if if there was no rules, they would just everyone would start building pro mods because you know it is what it is. But yeah, so Alex Laughlin's going to be there. I assume he's going to run his blue Corvette. 
Um, he was Chucky. Chucky was trying to get him to lock into a race on the DNR podcast. That was a freaking amazing podcast. That was. That was very <laughs> that was great. Shout out to DNR Auto. Matt Rice. Matt, he actually has sponsored me a little bit on some things. He's given me some good pricing on parts and availability yeah. of that stuff. He's helped me out with advice and all kinds of stuff. And also so. shout out to Elisa Noel that helped us yeah. or helped him, I should say. She uh, does marketing work and graphic design work. Yeah. Really does a good job at flyers. If there's a badass race flyer out there, you can probably bet. She's had her hand up. Yeah. Like, you can pretty much tell all these big races that, that have nice looking flyers. Yeah. That's Elisa Noel. So shout out to Elise for uh, for helping uh, Matt get that hooked up, and um, she's just been really good to work with. We worked with her at the uh, Eat Race Die event uh, when Mike Marillo had that thing at Kill Care. Yeah, yeah, so. she's a she's a great, uh, great, great person to work with. So, uh, what else? Let's see, zip tie. Zip tie crashed again. What Caught is that, on like fire. The sixth time? No, I don't know. Don't, don't be know. don't be over dramatic. That ain't cool. I mean, I'm. It's crashed a lot. I mean, it's. But they race a lot. So I mean, it is what it is. You race a lot. No prep and street race. You're gonna Man, crash. Man, I've seen a lot of people on the internet talking about they need to get them girls out of the cars. That that it's, that's not gonna happen. No, that's just part of who they are. I mean, they're not gonna quit. I mean. I, I'll be honest, after I watched it crash again out there on the street when it caught on fire, I was like, from the video, it looks like it just got away from her. But, you know, JJ had a live feed the other day and said that it broke a tie rod when it came down off that wheel stand. And she didn't understand why it kept pulling. And maybe she drove it a little bit too far. I don't know. We're not in that seat. That's probably a faster car than we've ever been in, so... But anyway, it did get away from her. Uh, luckily, it didn't hit the ugly duckling, the little purple car with, uh, what's her name that drives it? Mallory Gully. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Mallory Gully. Uh, so luckily, it didn't get a hold of her car um, and didn't tear up her car any. But it rolled over, caught on fire, burnt to the ground for the most part, and it looked to me like J.J. went to his mother's house. He claims that was his mom's house. I don't know. But found an old 66 or 7 laying out in the field. They drug it up on a trailer, and they had it fired up the other night. I don't know if they've already switched the back half of the body or not, but... Looked like they weren't wanting to show the outside of it yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently, they've mixed together three or four cars to make one and use some of the parts off the old zip tie. Somebody said the other day, on or today on Facebook, that they're going to use up more cars than Dukes of Hazard. I didn't care about Dukes of Hazard. Those are Dodge Chargers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to see him use up all the Novas. <laughs> I mean, I'm just kidding. I they're like not. Dodge Chargers. I mean, they're fucking sweet cars too. Yeah. Just a hater. Just a hater on Dodge. You telling me you you wouldn't have a Dodge Charger, a '69 Dodge Charger? I like to look at them, but I don't think I want one. They're too long. I can't even fit them in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a Impala in this garage? You know that. Never had an Impala in here. Huh? That was a Chevelle, dingus. I know. I'm talking about we need an Impala. No, we don't. We need a 64 Impala. No, we don't. Yeah, we do. So, uh, I guess we're going to make a call um, to Rankin's Relic, Chris Rankin. And he's going to tell us a little bit about the race that he's putting on. Um, That's his race, the Airport Wars? Yeah, I think he's trying to help uh, somebody else, you know, get it going or whatever. So we're going to give him a call now. This is that cat that beat you first round down at... Uh, Your speaker's better, so we'll hold it up towards it. This is that cat that beat you first round. Who is this? It's Chris Rankin. You called me. What for? <laughs> <laughs> I did, did I? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm being bored if I called you. <laughs> What's going on, Chris? This is Bill Hoskinson. Oh, what's going on, guys? oh, not much. We're just sitting here screwing around with this podcast. So tell me about this airport wars thing that you got going on. So, man, uh, the race you got going on on April 6th is uh, going to start off at 8 a.m. I'll give you just a lowdown on what the 
the gate schedule is going to be and spectator price and all that good stuff. Okay. So the race in Berkeley Springs Airport and uh, 1150 Airport Lane in Berkeley Springs, West Virginia. Okay. So um, it's uh, $350 buy-in for big tire, $250 buy-in for small tire. It's a 100% buy-in, so everything goes to the pot. Uh -huh. Depending upon, there's, there's no there's no limit on car on our car count. So okay. It could be a, you know, a 16 car field, 32 car field or higher. We'll draw off my hat. Uh, for rounds, it's uh, spectators are $15, kids under 12 are free. Gates open at 8 a.m. And the man in the past times we've had the gates in the spring have a five mile backup. By Holy by smokes. Like 8 in the morning. Yeah, crazy, crazy. We had like 20, I'm going to say like 22, 2300 people. We had counted for head count. We had two, 300 people come to the woods. And then we had about 750 to 1,000. We had to shut the gate on there because the spectators were getting out of hand. Wow. Um, yeah, dude, the race never really kicked off to ever have spectator shit, man. Me and my wife were driving up the road on Thanksgiving night last season, last year, 2018. Um, and, uh, sorry, 2017. And uh, I was like, you know what, baby? We need to get this shit off the road. I'm like, I'm so tired of, you know, having to worry about how we're going to kick this off every few nights, wherever we're going to go to Mexico and kick off a race or test. Right. And so I hit up a buddy of mine, Ronnie Silica, man, good old street racer. Yeah, I know Ronnie. Time. Yeah, I mean, he's a good guy, great guy. He's a small tire dude. Yeah. And uh, I said, man, shoot me a pin drop on that station. We were supposed to go to like a year or two ago in the middle of the night. Uh, and, and shot a pin drop, dude, it was the wrong spot. I went home, and my wife and I like kind of out where we thought it was. I found it, hit the owner up, and just created this established relationship since I had a couple back the next day. Going back the next time, work day. So this airport race has been big uh, since then. And it's been a lot of fun. Um, we used to kick the, uh, the gates open at like nine, but now we're doing eight. We used to kick the uh, test passes off from like two hours, from like 11 to 12. We kick the racing off around two, but now we're doing one test pass, opening the gates at 10. Um, I'm sorry, opening the testing till 10, allowing that to 11. We used to allow everybody at one shakedown pass. Uh -huh. um, or as they want to call it, test pass, whatever. And driving me at 11.30 and racing starting at noon. Um, usually we're done by 7, 8 o'clock and garage race until 11, 12 o'clock at night. Yeah. So what date is that again? That's April 6th. Uh, that's a Saturday. And the rain date's the 13th, the following Saturday. That's okay. Be the, uh, Can we come down? The, uh, rain day for Are we allowed to come down Friday night and get in line early? Yeah, you guys come down Friday night. If you guys would love to, you guys to come, man. Like, you know, Billy's car, Billy's truck would be great. Your, your car, I'm not, I've never seen your car. i never raced with your car. It's I've junk. Billy's truck work twice. It's slow. It's <laughs> junk. Sure. So nah, it, we you. might no, come no, down I'm Friday. We might we might come down Friday, get in line, and then um, bring both cars down. And that's Berkeley Springs, West Virginia Airport. Correct. Okay. Yep, it's right off the bridge of uh, 520. I was going to say is where the bridge is. Uh, turn out the end of 70, get off 520, I believe it is. It's off the side of the bridge. You can't miss a lot of signs okay. out there, but it's a good spot. Okay. We're going to have small tire class first. Then we're going to have the stick class, which is basically any H pattern ship in stick class. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have uh, the big tire main event. We had a couple call out grudge races. The guy was super racing me and Tommy Reek and Tommy and I were talking last night. We might do best two out of three just to. Yeah, uh, that's a good deal, man. Race more fun. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I told him, man, you come up with your bill. I don't want to. I don't want to take advantage of him at all. Right. That well, sounds good, man. I can't wait yeah. to come down. We'll see you down there, okay? So is uh, Billy going to have his truck ready? Yeah, it's running. We just uh, we're down to polishing wheels now, so you know we're in pretty good shape. We're we're polishing wheels and polishing piping and putting decals on. We're doing the gravy work now. Right on, right on. Well, we're not doing. Remember, it's going to be all water burn out down there. Okay. Um, so it's no prep, no prep. I burnout. can't use my skinny sauce. Man, you're not going to let us use our skinnies. No, man. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I, mean, I love those dudes. I love those guys, man. Those guys are great guys. They got good product. Okay. Yeah, man, we're going to do just a water burnout, flashlight start, uh, no chase to race. Although we like all those rules, um, and we love doing that. We love being a part of that. Mm -hmm. Just some of the guys that uh, have all been involved with this race since day one are used to the flashlight start that we did. Yeah, that's fine. Um, There's nothing wrong with that. And we just, 
You want to change it up for him. It's like old Chris Hamilton says, man. Just show me the starting line. Just show us the starting line. I don't, we don't care what the rules are. As long as everybody's playing by the same rules, we could care less. We'll do flashlight start, yeah, arm right. drop, chases, race. We don't care. Right. We're all the same as you guys, man. We, we're all on the same page. and We, we, like, we like doing both. When it, comes to, when it comes to the airport, it's just uh, uh, too, too awesome. A lot of people would create the scrutiny about it, man. It's not street. Well, we all came from the street. We've all raced on the street. Yeah. And it was just us trying to create a, a controlled environment to give you like the no prep, right. uh, shitty surface of a street to where right. you can do it and not have to deal with any kind of uh, reds and blues. And you know, right. it was never initi- initially, uh, 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 you know, initiated to create a lot of spectatorship. Just we had a race one, the one we did, did the one we did December sixteenth last year. We kicked off December first, um, and uh, within two weeks we had the event. Snow the night before, three inches of snow over the mountain. People came. There was uh, like 65 cars, and we had just under 900 spectators. But we never initially thought we were going to have that kind of spectatorship. We weren't ready. We had no security. <laughs> we didn't have setting stuff for all that kind of, you know, right. abundant people to be up at the starting line. It was like, oh my God. So, so it sounds like you guys got it under control now. Yeah, yeah, man. That's a different deal. We, well, we ran the other direction. When we invited JJ up, JJ and the producers came up, Pilgrim, and we all sat down the night before, and we, you know, rolled out the the linear sort of shutdown, and you know they were like, man, we got this in the bag to run the other direction. We're good with turning around. So once they turned it around, and we realized, you know, it was really safe still, shutting, the, having the shutdown um, turned around where it's a dead end, and not having another half mile shutdown. We realized it was good, and we we now continue to run it the same direction because it gives. Better spectatorship makes it easier for all the guys to pit. We pretty much pit right on the asphalt runway. Okay. So you pretty much, all the half of the runway is all pitting. And then beyond that, I'm going to say 50 to 75% of the people are able to park their personal vehicle that's parking right on the other end of the runway. Nice. They'll put a note in it and shut the runway down for basically two days, three days for the your thing. Okay. All right, man. Well, it sounds good. We'll probably see you down there. We'll probably come down Friday night and get in line. We'll see you there bright and early Saturday morning, okay? You got it, guys. Look forward to seeing you, man. Thank All you right, brother. Call. You're welcome. Thanks, Chris. Bye, bye. See you, buddy. Appreciate it. All right, so it sounds like we're going to Berkeley Springs, West Virginia, yes, April, April 6th and 7th. April That's going to be a good time. And look, man, I think the popularity with those events like this at the airports is, uh, is, is really good because – it uh, it is it is just like being on a street as far as the traction goes, but it's not like being on a track. A no prep track is a lot more slick on out. Once you break the tires loose on a no prep track, it's like being on ice. Whereas you know if, if you're at KD or one of these um, airport races, you break the tires loose, you get sideways out there 300 feet, 300 and feet, you can usually, bring them back. Usually it's pretty wide and there's grass on each right. side. Right. And you're not going to hit a wall. If any, if you're going to hit anything, it's usually going to be another car. Uh, you're not going to hit a wall. Uh, so it's I like I like the airport deal. You got a lot of room to work with, and it simulates the street. Right. You know they do the same thing at Milan, Michigan. The Detroit Hood TV events up there, uh, running backwards at Milan. That's a good event. And you got the streetcar brawl up at US 41. Uh, we're planning on going up there this year a little bit. Uh, as much as we can and uh, I think you know I can't wait because that's the whole reason I'm transferring my Nova from a bracket car over to a street car putting it back on the street putting mufflers on it you know we put that uh, uh, direct port kit on it from John Molina and that's the whole reason we've done all this work to that that Nova is to take it to these uh, airport events and back of the track events and run it on bare asphalt because the car does really good that way so so anything else before we get uh, off here? Just going to shout out some of our sponsors. Uh, Want to make sure that we do that. Uh, Hot Shot Secret, obviously. They jumped on board just a couple weeks ago. They said they would help us with some oil, transmission fluid, gear oil. They make it all. Uh, yeah. They've got all kinds of good stuff for your uh, diesel uh, pickups, your your pullers. If you got a truck to pull your rig or whatever, they've got all kinds of products for that. They're a local company right here in central Ohio, located in Mount Gilead, Ohio, right off of 70. Um, really nice facility up there. You can stop by any. I think, right? 71, that's 71. right, 71. 
up north of Columbus. Yeah. So you got them guys. Thank you, thank you, Hot Shot Secret for helping us out. Yeah. You know. Um, who do we got? Um, 660 Supply helped us out. They sent us some wastegates. Um, we desperately need those, so I appreciate that, guys. Uh, check them out. They've got a website, 660supply.com. Right. Um, great guys. They're looking into making some traction bars for an S10, uh, similar to Assassin bars. So look for those to come out here pretty soon. We He's may end up with a set of those phase. on our truck. Yeah, they've got a lot more adjustment than your traditional Caltrack bars, a lot of different load settings. Um, so that'll be something to look for. They sell a lot of stuff on their website, so go check them out too. Also, DNR Auto, check them out. Matt Facebook, Rice. he has an awesome podcast. He sells parts. He's a dealer for VS Racing Turbos. Probably the best podcast, best live podcast I've ever seen is yeah. so the ones great, that Matt great does. Great guy there. Yeah. Um, who else? Skinny Street Sauce. They're always uh, on board to help us get hooked up and make sure we're going to go down the street as fast as possible. I wouldn't use anything else. I, I know I every time care. I if get If somebody skinnies, gave us something else, I wouldn't use it just because of how much respect I Every time I get skinnies, I know it's going to be consistent. I know what I'm getting. It's going to work whether it's cold, hot, asphalt, concrete, whatever. It's going to work. So I'll always use skinnies. I appreciate you guys for stepping up and sponsoring us. Um, who else? I think that's it. So if I forgot you, I'm sorry. Vickers Transmissions. Yeah, Vickers, Vickers Transmissions. Vickers Performance Transmissions. Obviously, we talked about them in the beginning. Uh, obviously, a great, great group of guys to work with. Performance Research, Joe Coben. If you're in Columbus, Ohio, or surrounding areas, uh, they do excellent machine work. Uh, Top notch stuff from them guys. So uh, I think that is it. So, thank All you guys right. for watching. Um, we've got new hoodies out. So, make sure you guys go to the website. Check those out. Street Racing Channel Garage hoodies and t-shirts. Yeah, Gene has been texting me some different um, design patterns. Like uh, weathered, or what did she call that? Uh, distressed. Probably. Distressed, yeah. Yeah, so, really cool design. Got the Nova and the S10 in it. Uh, and even the dog. So we got June in it. June too, pup. In that design. So uh, we're going to have a lot of cool stuff coming out from the arm drop or the Gina Rose in the shirt gallery. They're doing a lot of cool stuff for us. Uh, also, you can get the Never Lift shirts. Uh, I have those on the website as well as the original <laughs> logo shirts too. So we appreciate everybody's support that, you know, the shirts and the hoodies and the, the decals and everything uh desperately uh, not desperately but it definitely helps us uh, keep the truck running i know um, for a fact if i hadn't sold as many shirts hoodies and decals of a, as i have this this winter i would not be able to put that s10 back together and it no. wouldn't be ready right now so we greatly appreciate everyone's support if you've ordered hoodies or hats or decals or whatever we've got some new stuff coming out we've got some vanity plates some key rings, some armbands. We've got a whole bunch of neat stuff coming out and these new shirts and hoodies. So guys, uh, I can't, we can't thank you enough for your support. I mean, the support has been overwhelming. And if it wasn't for all the, the people out there that support us, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing. We wouldn't be able to go to these races and be ready as much as we are um, for, for stuff like that. So appreciate you guys. We're going to head off. Um, and uh, good night. Thanks, everybody.